I'm going to take a stab at an invocation tonight that I hope doesn't offend anybody. Uh, after last night's meeting, I just felt like it was appropriate. So, um, I'm going to do that. God grant us the serenity to accept the things that we can change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Sorry. Accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things we can, and wisdom to know the difference. That's all I wanted to say. All right. Stand for Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, 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 to the Republic for which it stands, stands, one nation, under, nation, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. all. I will call this meeting of the June 22nd Planning Commission of the City of Milton to order. This is a regular meeting of the Milton Planning Commission. Uh, I'm George Ragsdale. This is a seven-member commission appointed by the City of Milton Mayor and City Council, created for the purpose of uh, holding public hearings and making recommendations on rezonings, use petitions, concurrent variance applications, comprehensive land use plan and plan map, and other related plans and amendments to the ordinance. Uh, the applications, uh, which, of which we have none tonight, but the items on the agenda will be heard in the sequence that they're listed. I would like to acquaint you with some of the rules and procedures for conducting the meeting. Uh, any of those speaking in support of an item on the agenda will be allowed a total of 10 minutes to present their point of view. Uh, the uh, speaker may choose to save some of the time for a rebuttal following any presentation by the opposition. The opposition will be allowed a total of 10 minutes to present its position. If time remains, the opposition will be allowed to rebut. <clears throat> I uh, neglected to introduce everybody. I will do that now. To my left is Paul Moore, Jennifer Fletcher. To my right, Chris Doty and Joe Kramer. Um, staff and, the, uh, and uh, the Community Development Department staff will be keeping track of time and will inform uh, the speakers periodically of time remaining for any presentation they make. Anyone who like, would like to speak needs to fill out a speaker card and turn it in to um, uh, Lynn or, or uh, Robin before uh, they speak. All speakers want we need to have identify themselves by name, address, and I'm not very good at that, so don't follow my example, um, before beginning their presentation. Uh, demonstration of any sort within the chamber is prohibited, so please refuse a refrain, refrain from any applause or dialogue. No, no clapping out there. Uh, with the person speaking or any outbursts. Um, any material that you want to submit to the Planning Commission during the meeting, uh, unless requested to do so by the Commission, is prohibited. Uh, finally, to uh, anyone who's speaking in, in support of something, uh, if the item is deferred, uh, if, since there's no really zoning application, it's that's really not applicable. Um, I will uh, open the meeting for public comment. Would you like to comment on anything other than what's on the agenda? Okay. Uh, I would like a motion to close public comment, please. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. The uh, first item is the approval of the minutes from the May 25th meeting. Are there any corrections or changes to the minutes from that meeting? Hearing none. Motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Robin, would you sign the first item, please? The next uh, item is the uh, proposed additional amendments to the City of Milton Planning Commission bylaws as discussed at the May 25th, 2010 meeting. Um, I'll just review over it. I think I got everything that we talked about or that you all discussed um, on my comment sheet. The purpose of the proposed change in Article 4, Section 1, is to ensure consistency and attendance to the Planning Commission meetings. Um, number 2, the purpose of the proposed change in Article 5, Section 1, is to revise the day of regular meetings from, from Thursday to Tuesday, as well as acknowledging that based on various holidays, the day and week of the Planning Commission meeting will deviate from the normal fourth Tuesday of the month. Number three, the purpose of the proposed changes in Article 5 is to ensure consistency of the word application <coughs> or applications to applicants um, throughout 
the article. So um, based on those items, I mean, basically we changed, um, you should see the changes in red uh, that were discussed. So, Any questions or comments on the changes? Hearing none, I'd like a motion to approve the changes to the bylaws. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Okay. Next item, Robert. Okay. The next item is um, the continued discussion of the process and procedures for text amendments and other associated documents. Um, so I believe that in your packet was a memo from Lynn. Um, explaining um, what had happened at the last meeting and her thoughts um, so obviously she could go through that and go through the, um, the process what I've captured in the memo is um, how I believe a summary of, of what I believe you all asked for at the last meeting um, I've revised the flowchart to address that and again if there's something that appears to be incorrect please let me know this is what I intend to take assuming that you all uh, approve this uh, version this is what I intend to take as a resolution before the City Council and I would probably uh, take this to work session prior to that so that they have a very clear understanding of what they're resolving to do as a process from here on out Questions. I have a couple, if, if sure. just to get it started. The heading on here says Community Development Office Recommendation. Will this be put forward as your recommendation? No, this will be put forward as your recommendation. Okay. Uh, at this point, it's still me. <laughs> I'm sorry? At this point, it's still me. I'm just summarizing what, what you all discussed last time. Okay. Well, that's. So. I didn't want to see you get yourself in the middle. You may not want to label it as a Community <laughs> Development Office Recommendation. I appreciate the thought. <laughs> After last night, I think it's an important thought. Um, the other thing for me is I, I think it would be helpful to include the flow chart for the non-zoning text amendments so that okay. it clearly doesn't feel like we're trying to grab everything, that the, the process is different for those, and just to differentiate them. And the flow chart does capture as we had asked yes. last time. I thought you guys did an excellent yeah, you job. Yeah, you did a good job of, with that. Uh, Making those changes to really truly reflect what we were looking for and ensure that the interaction takes place uh, Good, thank that you. we thought we're miss you know, was missing before. So I, I really applaud you guys for uh, really capturing the essence of what we intended. Not just not the essence, you captured what we intended. Good, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Everybody okay with this going forward as our recommendation to City Council? Do you, want a, do you want a motion to um, put forward this process as a, as a resolution? I do, and I've tentatively scheduled this for the work session in July. It would be July 14th, okay. I believe. We need a, a motion to um, approve the, what are we going to call it, the zoning text amendment? Zoning procedure for zoning text amendment? Okay. Yeah. Right. Where do you want to call it? Okay. I move that we um, carry forward the revised procedures for zoning text amendments and ordinances from the planning commission to the mayor and council for now. Second. A motion and a second. Uh, any comments, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. <coughs> Opposed? Okay. Very good. Chairman, I would ask that um, someone from Planning Commission attend that work session, uh, I'll, since I'll this will be from you all. Uh, I will promise I'll be there. Stand. Thank you. Curtis, did you abstain? Or did no. You vote? Okay. No, I voted. Okay, I was. Thank you. Next item, Robin. The next item is discuss prioritized list of hot topic items um, for future Planning Commission action, and then again, there's a, a handout that goes with that. Grid. So, um, again. I'll take this one too. Yeah. Um, there's not really a memo for this. You all gave us kind of a list of, of what you thought was important to um, to get started. 
out of either the planning office or from the uh, planning commission itself. Um, I put that together with the priorities that uh, we um, gave to you last time from the council. Um, tried to create a system in which visually we could then prioritize and associate your priorities and their priorities and then list them with some starting dates and um, added some kind of administrative stuff, which is a technical term for how long will it really take. Um, and uh, what has floated to the top are issues of conservation design, which includes conservation subdivision and potentially other uh, types of development um, that would involve conservation design. That can be low impact development, um, additional ordinances and regulations, again, that would just relate to that conservation design overall, overarching kind of basket of items. Um, conservation easements floated to the top, as well as the creation of transfer of development rights. However, I really feel like we can't start that process without completion of the comp plan. Uh, I think that's just in too intrinsic to that process. So. Um, that's pending the comp plan. Um, changes to zoning per land use classification changes in the comp plan. Obviously, that one is related to the comp plan. Um, the next would be amendment of the sign ordinance. Uh, this includes um, some directional signage with MIX districts and, and other um, signage that we haven't really addressed in our sign ordinance, including things like temporary signs, um, some of the real estate signs that we have. Lynn, can I stop you for a minute? Yes, sir. As you go through these from here on down, uh, I mean, I think I know in some cases, but would you help us understand where these are originating from in terms of, of the, the, the item being on the list and then who or what group is going to initiate the activity? Okay. Um, I think most of these will come from the planning department. Um, again, we'll need your support and your involvement in almost all of these in some form or fashion. Um, but most of these will originate within the planning department. Uh, the work will, but I mean, for, for example, with the sign ordinances, is that coming from you guys because you see that there's a need to do something there, or is that coming from somewhere else? That one comes mostly from, from us. We have seen the need, and that's um, one of the subsets of the business-friendly, equestrian-friendly policies. You know, some of that is related to signage, okay. so. Um, and I, again, if you want me to go through, I can, we, I can go through the list that you all had originally put together and just remind you of what that list is and we kind of. Oh, you got it here. I mean, okay, can, okay. Can I ask a question on for you? If there's something I missed. Yes, sir. This document was presented or prepared really for us to capture what we were saying last time. Mm -hmm. How is this document going to be used beyond the course of this meeting? Is it going to be presented to anyone else as a, a document in, in, in process by the Planning Commission, or, or does this just reside with us? And the reason I'm asking is, sure. and if it's going to be presented beyond us, um, there are there's some wordsmithing I'd like to do to make sure that we don't maybe narrow some stuff too much or sure. leave it too broad so that as it's being interpreted by other entities, if it's going to be carried on beyond us, that we ensure that the intent is crystal clear. Okay. I think that that's valuable. In fact, um, what I was considering as far as the use of this were really two different things. Um, one would be, yes, sharing it with the mayor and city council so that they understand that your priorities are their priorities and that we are trying to work together on those um, and we will try to get some things accomplished. Um, the other would be in budgeting. Um, in fact, in the next probably three weeks, I have to budget for all the next year's capital uh, requests, including all the new initiatives. Some of these are new initiatives and there will be some budget uh, implications of them and so I've got to get those things in that budget uh, format. Um, I'll say that this format is also being used for by the other department heads 
to prepare their uh, budget requests as well so that they can sync up. <laughs> you all were just the, the starters, so, you know, the, the brain starters, as it were. So we've gotten them all fired up. I agree with Paul. It may, it may almost require a memo on, on top to say what it is. Yes, sir. more fully. <laughs> okay. So it's not just taken, oh, uh, well, this is, this is all there is, this is it. Mm -hmm. As Paul said, it's open to interpretation. Yeah, also, I think we'll take some explanation as to why things that are way down at the bottom of the priority list we're anticipating starting this month and the things that are higher priority. Yeah. Up for their time. Yeah, some of those just happen to be some of the things we've already started <laughs> before we had a priority list to go by. Well, then one other question. Um, yes. If, if I go back to at least my notes from that last meeting and I look at what you put on here for the, for the city council's priorities, my notes may not be right, but what I captured was that the number four priority was intersection improvements for safety and ease. And I didn't see that even listed here. And, and I may have written that down wrong, but that's what I wrote down as the fourth priority. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. That would be instead of business and equestrian friendly, it's not four and five, it's five and six. Yeah, that's, it's that's, priority that's five right. and well, six. I, I, I had it look differently. I had business and equestrian friendly was six, but along with that was public perception of the police department. Right. They shared five and six place, okay. fifth and sixth place. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because this is going to go anywhere that we don't miss one of the things. I well. understand. Thank you for catching that. So. Uh, how do we how do we interpret or conversely how do we portray this to others in terms of our priorities? Uh, uh, the way you've done this, the, the way I would read it is you're portraying it as if our priorities are listed in order here because of the way they line up with the city council's priority. Okay. And that would be correct in how we kind of rearrange things. Um, Again, like I said, the ones with the most dots floated to the top as a higher priority item. Sure. One of them on here that I don't remember us talking about, maybe we did, um, but is, is revisions to the telecommunications ordinance. That was already in huh? progress. That's already in progress because of the... But that's not a zoning it, It's right? really not. It came from staff. That's something that, that we're having to do as part of staff. So... Given development that we're to draw separation is that something that really should be on our list I mean there is one probably that, not <laughs> there, is, there is one here that talks about making sure that where is it it's right below the edit yeah. zoning ordinance right mm -hmm. for cell towers mm -hmm. that that one I, that one we talked about and that one made sense but that telecommunication ordinance just stood out as maybe something that shouldn't be here yeah we can take that one out which which also raises a question for me if we're asked to give input on an ordinance that's not a zoning ordinance do we have the uh, latitude to refuse possibly <laughs> if you so choose <laughs> based on recent history maybe we would. any any other comments or changes I, I guess my concern tonight was making sure that we're collectively okay with these priorities and that we would start trying to work our way down this list um, I'm assuming we would work our way down this list but you would lead that process mm -hmm. that your office would lead that process okay. that's what I would expect as well okay any changes I mean I, I agree with what everybody said who, who Who's going to write the memo and who's going to make these crystal clear so there's no misunderstanding about what they say? If you'd like me to take a stab at it and send it around by email, if that would be. If, if you have the time to do that, I think that would be great. Or would you like to? I can if you want to. I, mean, <laughs> I, I think it's, you know, we don't want to spend a lot of time. I mean, the value of this mm -hmm. is getting it out there and getting to work on it. Yeah. So it might, we might benefit from a little bit of discussion on items that people have to sure. be concerned about tonight. Maybe just sure. touch on a couple of okay. things. Okay. Absolutely. That would be helpful for me. And I really, I didn't read it for that mm -hmm. um, today as I was preparing for that, but okay. I mean, there are a couple that pop, pop out to me. Um, you know, just, if you don't mind, George, maybe no, stepping in the Absolutely. 
Um, for example, um, when, when, when it says create transfer development rights, and transfer development rights policy exists today, mm -hmm. so we're not having to create a new, a new definition for that. So is the intent here for us to create a, a to adopt a language that can be taken into our policies? And I that's, that's probably the overall brushstroke, right? Yes, I think so it'll what does take. That really mean? Um, I think, not having done one yet, um, I think that it will take at minimum an ordinance to create the opportunity to transfer these uh, development rights and allow for um, evaluation of those, where they're coming from, who they're going to, and then the, it might even take a separate ordinance to create the banking for those rights because someone will have to hold the... Um, Again, like I said, the value of those uh, development rights. Um, the record keeping of it. We have to right. the process to make sure that it's, if somebody is sacrificing a development right in an in area in order to gain something somewhere else, mm -hmm. and it may be years before somebody executes the second half of that deal. Right. So, so is it really more appropriate to say that we want to create the ordinances necessary to support the transfer of development rights process? It won't fit in the box. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the first ones that popped out. Today. It's more clear to say it that way, yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> um, second one that, that pops out to me is, is the one regarding the sign ordinance. I think that there are a variety of things with the sign ordinance that need consideration. And to, to, to name directional signs with mixed districts right now, Okay. And I think that we should take a broader swipe at that. And certainly that should be in the consideration, but I don't know that it needs to be highlighted at that point. The, the, okay. the top priority is there are a number of priorities within the review of the site ordinance. Um, same thing on landscape business use permit, revision and other related agricultural uses. I mean, what is that really saying? We, we have a landscape business use permit that exists today. We know that trying to assess it for consideration in appropriate placement within the city. Mm -hmm. so I don't know that, that stating it like it is really captures that. I don't know how to say it differently at the moment without having you know, more time to think about it. But I think that one also takes Robin, you're pretty familiar with that one. Is there another I mean, way there was the, um, uh, you all created um, a tentative landscape business that we gave to Ken to review yeah. and then that kind of stopped there. So I guess, you know, looking at that revision, yeah. continuing on, but I think as we discussed when we were talking about it, it just, you know, it's a big onion to peel and there's just layer after layer of issues, um, agriculturally related uses and just even defining what is agricultural. So I think it's, it's coming back to where we left off um, to continue that. Maybe, maybe I'm being selfish, but I'd like to see us get something done. I'd, I'd like to see us separate those into two things. I mean, okay, one that's of them fine. Is the landscape business, and the other is, is the other ag agricultural uses. Because okay. I think we're pretty close to having the landscape business done, and it'd be nice to kind of drive that through. <coughs> uh, I those are the ones that struck me on the first. There's another one in here, I think, that was a staff-initiated one as well that uh, speaks to amending the mixed-use zoning district to permit roadside stands. That's something that we've kind of had in the hopper. That's why it's got a June 2010 deadline here, or start date on it, because we really kind of started that one already. If you want us to remove that one, we can. No, I think, I mean, as I recall, that's something we even talked about when we were talking about landscape businesses. We got into oh, really? Okay. About what the roadside stand definition was and when was it acceptable and was it Producer. Well, it's it's not quite going into that depth. It's more that um, a roadside stand, like a 
farmer's market, that's what we would be using it for, was not included in MIX and having a roadside, not a roadside stand, but a farmer's market technically is, I mean, we can't, I mean, we, we, it's not included in the MIX to be permitted. So that's an oversight, not by us, but just the way it is. So we're really not talking about roadside stand. You're talking about amending the mixed use zoning to include road to include farmers markets. Well, but it's yeah, well, by definition it's a roadside stand, but that would I mean, include. That, that's mm -hmm. our point. We, yeah. we talked about mm -hmm. what a roadside stand means, and whether that, you know, I think if I recall right, yeah. whether it should be allowed if people could could sell vegetables from their own property. Did that rise to the level of a commercial business and a roadside stand or mm -hmm. or not? Mm -hmm. and, I mean, we did get into that discussion. Right, and it's already permitted in C1 and C2 and o, even O&I, but it, it was not included in a MIX, and because there's some fair amount of MIX in the Crab Apple area, that that we need to resolve that. So maybe to... This is the NLO ordinance. Yeah, right. <laughs> it should be labeled as. <laughs> um, I was trying to, like, step our, around uh, that. But yeah, <laughs> Maybe it's broken out separately so that we can focus on that, nail it, and get it done yeah, be good without in, trying to capture even, it in so many other even, even though it's number 12 on the priority. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, and actually we're changing, I think when we were reviewing it, it's not actually changing the MIX district, it's changing the permitted district in the use administrative, the administrative use permit. Mm -hmm. Wasn't the first farmer's market a week or two ago? No, so he, it's coming up. No, it's first of July, July, yeah. July, he didn't have the one that he wanted because he wasn't zoned for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, he we couldn't get a use permit. We may need to rewrite this because it's really not accurate because that's why I started to amend the mixed use. And it's like, no, that's not the which way. So it's really amending the administrative permit for the... For roadside stands. For roadside span. Okay. You know, my, my, my only kind of overall editorial comment is I think there's, there's an awful lot of things in here where we're talking about amending the zoning ordinance. And, and I'm not sure we need to list every one of them individually. Um, I mean, when you talk about clean up conflicts in the zoning ordinance, that's kind of, of an overhaul of the zoning ordinance. And when you talk about revising definitions, for, for uses, that's kind of an overhaul. I mean, we could probably just combine those and talk about a, a you know an overall review and, and upgrade or whatever of the yeah, zoning ordinance. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And now, having read the second page, I would also maybe suggest that do we potentially put ourselves in harm's way by saying blatantly limit plane uh, pain? <laughs> Yeah. Maybe consideration of paying the clinic um, mm -hmm. as they pertain to our zoning ordinances. We'll just address those. How's that? And that's obviously the intent. We don't the intent to have it. <coughs> why, you understand. Why, why not combine those two and say consider paying clinics and drug and alcohol rehab centers as permitted uses in the zoning ordinance or something? Or just say it meant the via ordinance rather than saying it's permitted. One I'm confused most about, I guess, is the one at the top of the page, too, where the project link varies, the start date is pending. <laughs> it uh, sounds kind of fuzzy. That one is, is a little fuzzy. Um, the green community start, uh, designation from ARC requires 150 points. In order to get this 150 points, I think it's 150 in that Something right? like that, yeah. yeah. In order to get this 150 points, they have a uh, probably six-page list of different things that you can do and different things qualify for a certain amount of points. So um, in order to get the designation, we're going to have to do a variety of different things. Instead of listing each and every one of those out here, or even considering each and every one of those, we know that we're trying to get to that green community designation. So we're going to take it a little at a time and just keep plugging away at it until we hit the some 150 mark. Some of them are text amendments. Not all of them, but some of them are. Some are policies inside the city as far as, you know, city hall usage of recycled paper, stuff like that. So. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah, I've got a Curtis. Uh, two 
that have to do with uh, the presentation. I'm, um, it, it's, we've already touched on this, but it's confusing why these things are sequenced the way they are. And I may be a little bit too analytical, but I found myself trying to go through and look where the diamonds were under the priorities and see if there was some kind of underlying weighting system that if it was three closer to the left, that weighed more. <laughs> you know, and, and, I, and, and it's not, obviously, and there are inconsistencies, especially when you get into the second page where some have one, some have two, et cetera. And I, I just, it, if, if it's possible, I thought maybe we ought to sequence them by date uh, even though that may push some higher priority ones down, but at least it'll 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 be sensible, and and then maybe add add some kind of a um, a reference number, you know, one, two, three, four, or five, so you won't have to read all the words for someone to know which one you're talking about. That's obviously cosmetic, but okay. So you would like to see them sorted by start date? And well, it's, start it's, just a, it's just a, a thought. I mean, I'd like to see them sorted by priority, but that's mushy. We, we've, we've all agreed. Or, or schedule sequence, if, you know, if that's not the same thing as priority for those that have already started. And I'm not on fire about this. It just seems logical. You know. Okay. I agree. It does make sense the higher priorities aren't the ones we would be working on. Yeah, and, 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 and ideally, uh, ideally we separate, you know, 2010 with a, with a thick black line that says this is on the radar screen and, you know, here are things for the, for the future. May or may not be 2011 or, anyway, that's my comments. True. Take a shot at it, or do you want me to? I'll give it a shot. I'll run it by you first. How's that? Well, or, or you, all of us first. Okay. Are you going to make Are you going to make the changes that that were mentioned that seem fairly obvious, like the priority, the missing priority, and the numbering yes. schemes, and then maybe some of the wording clarifications? Yes, and we'll be combining some of them so that'll eliminate some of the the quantity of them too. So. Okay. Uh, next item. Next item is. Um, I think that's it. Well, there's a report on status oh. preservation this, ordinance. This oh, Lynn, sorry. This is Lynn Tully. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, for those of you who weren't there, the uh, historic preservation ordinance did pass. It was uh, the version um, recommended by committee, and then. Uh, meshed by legal and myself trying to um, coalesce as much of your ordinance into what they had actually approved as well. So I don't think it was to anybody's full and complete satisfaction. However, um, I think it's an ordinance that we can work with and, uh, and we'll push on through. The next step for them is to appoint a historic preservation commission. And at that point, then they'll start preparing some design guidelines and looking at properties. They can look at those properties again, as you had mentioned earlier, before the meeting started. They can look at properties and districts and start to get those designated before we even have a historic zoning district, because that zoning district, as it was um, originally discussed, would have some to do with use and setbacks and uh, expansion of the existing uh, uses that are on there. Um, and again, that hasn't been written yet. That will come before you all. Um, we'll have to work on that together. I think that uh, when we get ready to do that, which I'm not ready to do this month, but when we get ready to do that, if we could uh, come up with what you all would like to see in that historic zoning designation and what you all would not like to see particularly, how tight you want to write that particular designation because I, I, I believe that uh, we're looking for something that's pretty, pretty tight. Um, and then I'll look at what options we have in where to place it in the in the zoning ordinance. Um, we've got it written as a zoning district. Potentially, we may want to consider um, moving that. That would make a change, require a change to the ordinance. But it's again, it's not um, something that would be completely outside of the realm of consideration at this point. Okay. 
Like Since I said. It isn't on our priority list now. Can we put it on there with the June? We can put it on there if you want to start it in July. 2011. 2011, okay. So just to clarify, the part that the zoning district definition that needs to come forward, mm -hmm. the, the, your, I hear you suggest that the, the baseline language of that will come from staff. For our consideration, or are we going to craft that, or how, how is that going to be generated? I would like to hear from you all what you would like to see in it and what you would not like to see in it, well, I, particularly, I, I, and then I'll craft some baseline. Uh, we, we need to make sure that everybody up here gets a copy of what was passed last night because none of us has any idea what that document looks like. Okay, yeah. and I'll be sure that you get a copy of that by email. Can we have that the next couple? Yes, you yeah, have it that. tonight when I get back yeah. to my computer. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just, just for, and, and I, I don't mean just to, to make this an editorial comment, but just for, to fill in the blanks for those that weren't there last night. The, what was reinforced last night, at least in this particular case, is diametrically opposed to the process that we're taking for by resolution. They, they clearly, even to the extent that I was personally a little offended that one of the council members went out of his way repeatedly to thank the committee for all their work and ignore the fact that we had worked on it too. Uh, at least to me that was obvious. Um, the, the, there are a couple of things in there that, that I think from our discussion are, are more disturbing to me than the zoning classification because at least we do have some, some input, some control over that. But they are that, that properties that are captured within the historic district that are not historic are going to be subject to the same approval process for making alterations as properties that are historic. Uh, also, properties that the commission deems to be historic do not require the property owner's affidavit or endorsement in order to be made historic. That Those are the two things that bother me most is, is the to me, the imposition of, of additional requirements on, on properties that aren't historic and the deprivation or the imposition of a classification on somebody that may not want it. Um, no. Those two things bother me more than anything else. So that's, but that's what they passed. So Anyway, so it'll be on our agenda, I assume, next time or maybe the time after that to, to start to work on that. There's an expectation that we're going to do something fairly soon, I think, outside of us. So. Um, it can be as quick or as late as you all would like as to see it. As late as we can make it is fine with me. Okay. Uh, I, mean, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but I'm not in any hurry to do it. <laughs> Let us, I would much um, rather, I'd much rather spend whatever energy we have getting this process through and approved before we start on another one of those so that we're clear on what we're going to do. Okay, I think that's a good strategy for us. Um, be happy to shepherd that through. And again, that will come, Curtis, for your information too, that will come before the council at work session in July. And we're asking that the Planning Commission try to attend. Well, it's, um, I don't know if you were calling on me or not. I had my hand up, but it was behind that. Oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't see you. Monitor. <laughs> I hate those things. I'm not sure. I mean, I got. You know, I brought my agenda with me, so I, um, it, 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 it's, it's premature and not having seen what was approved, it may even be moved, but um, I, I, I would just plant the seed if you're going to, or someone is going to craft the, the verbiage uh, that uh, uh, whatever future decisions or applications are made do not subvert this process as the approval did. And uh, I, I don't know, the, the, the wording may, uh, uh, may support a standard flow through that, that makes good sense, but if it's a special zoning district or something like that, I just want to make sure it doesn't bypass the process that was defined and, and uh, we've all been working under. I think that you'll be happy with what's been recommended. We let him off the hook, though. It's our recommendation, not hers. <laughs> okay. Uh, there is nothing else on the agenda unless anybody has anything else that uh, they would like to discuss. Hearing nothing, we need a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye.
opposed? Thank you. All right, thank you.